a number of reasons. So that I think the important ones are around provision of medical staff. So when I first qualified, my first contract was for 108 hours a week, mm -hmm. and now our maximum working week is 48 hours. So if you've got half as many doctor hours, you can't cover as many different sites with the same level of expertise as you used to be able to without more than doubling the workforce, and we just can't do that. So although workforce has increased, it's not increased to the level that we can provide the cover on all the sites that we need. I think patient care is on the whole very good, but it's not a level playing field. So some patients will get excellent care and some patients will get good care. And if you want to give patients all the excellent level of care we know we can deliver, you've got to concentrate the expertise in less sites. I think they will have to travel further, but probably not for much of their care. So if you look at a whole patient pathway, they might be involved with medical care for a period of, say, six months or even a year or perhaps longer. And it may be that during that period of a year or six months, they might spend a couple of days in a, an inpatient setting where they will be further away than they might currently be from their home base or home hospital even. But I think overall, it shouldn't make huge differences. No, I, mean, I think there are many things that we can continue to provide on many sites. So things that patients access regularly, things like um, physiotherapy, outpatients, those sorts of things. Actually, we may be able to provide closer to home because we're going to be able to release more expertise to provide services more in the community. And because we're going to concentrate our other more specialist services within the hospital. For example, stroke services, we know from up-to-date research that the best way of looking after someone post-stroke is in the community, in their own home, as soon as possible. So to release enough of our specialist stroke therapists to be able to support people in their homes, we can only support, for example, one um, acute stroke unit across the health board. Well, they've been talking about centralising some very specific services. So they're around um, multiple trauma, so having major trauma centres, which are more limited, because at the moment you can turn up with major trauma in, in any A&E department, and that A&E department, OK, will be able to manage things acutely, but then often you're shipped off to somewhere else, so a major centre perhaps that deals with neurosurgeries or head injuries or chest injuries, which is very specialist and can't be provided everywhere. And what we need to do is actually try and get patients to the right place first time instead of putting them somewhere, patching them up and then moving them again. So you want to get patients to the right place first time. Uh, so trauma, um, paediatrics and obstetrics um, and um, some of the other A&E services are the, are the main services that we're looking at. I think they will need to be provided in a few sites and few hospitals. And again, it's because we've got now the ability to provide much more intensive you know, care and much more advanced care than we used to be able to. And we can't provide that everywhere.